Have you ever wondered why you submit job applications and never get invited to interview? The problem could be some minor errors in your CV. This is the first part of you that a recruiter engage with before they meet you in person. It's important to make that moment count by having an impressive and professional CV. So why don't you get invited to interview? As a human resource practitioner, I can confirm that recruiters receive hundreds of applications and again, thousands of people join the workforce or change their jobs each year. To compete effectively, you need a professional CV that catches the attention of the recruiter. Our tutorial today highlights 11 blunders that we make which can easily be avoided. But before we start on the first one, please make sure to subscribe below if viewing us for the first time and share your comments. We shall reply and engage you further. Welcome to 5 Talents Africa and thank you for joining us. The first blunder we make is on the introduction. Let us start with the title. Instead of having the word curriculum vitae as the title, replace it with your name, followed by your contacts, cell phone number, and email address. Let us look at a few email addresses and please comment below if they sound professional. Handsome to death at gmail.com, babysweet at gmail.com, or even crazy and nasty at gmail.com. A professional email address should have at least one of your names. For example, if your name is Caroline, your professional email address may read as carol29 at gmail.com. You can use crazy and nasty at gmail.com if it's your official name and appears on official documents such as certificates or passports. But remember, first impressions matter. We also make errors in formatting and grammar. Some of these include using varied fonts, mixing upper and lower cases, and selective formatting. This makes your CV look like a disorganized flyer. Can you imagine reading a newspaper with such errors? If you decide to bold titles, do it for all headings. Make them standard. Differentiate the titles from bodies, such as responsibilities. Do not bullet one responsibility and leave the others. The use of unclear sentences and having grammatical errors make a document difficult to read and understand. Let us look at the question your CV should be responding to. Do you meet the job responsibilities and qualifications for this position? Being clear in responding to this question will make your CV get noticed faster. Let us know what you do if you bought a newspaper with grammatical errors. Sometimes you write unclear and lengthy personal statements. This is your advertisement section. It should be brief, clear, and catchy. It should cluster the key points of your detailed CV. Writing a clear statement can lead to further review of your CV if it meets the job requirement. Unfortunately, we write lengthy personal statements of up to 10 or more sentences with no punctuation mark. The recruiter may have to read the paragraph three or four times and still not understand what you mean. Remember, your CV is all about you, your qualifications, abilities, and accomplishments. And this is the value you bring to the company. This can be captured in this section if you take some time. It's important to understand what should be captured here, then write with clarity. Let us know if this section is important to have in a CV. Not listing the period you worked under previous employers is another blunder that we make. How will a recruiter assess your experience and skills acquired if this is not indicated? If the recruiter was to get this information from these companies, it may not be easy to access their records, especially if the organization is large. It may be possible if it's a small one. But this information is part of what you should be selling, the skills and experience acquired over the years, and it's expected to be captured here as you present your CV. By not having the details, limit your opportunities, because the recruiter does not have the correct information to select. It also speaks to how detail-oriented you are and whether you care for the position you've applied. These are the reasons why you should take your time to write this document. 
Do you think it's important to have these details in your CV? Please share your comments below and we shall get back to you. How can you summarize your responsibilities in one word? This is another error that we make. The hiring manager will never know what you did if your CV is the first point of contact. How will the recruiter know your capabilities if the information given is so brief? Not indicating your accomplishments and responsibilities can easily make your competitors outshine you. If you are an accountant, what did you accomplish at your last employment? If at some point you were a cook, what skills did you acquire? These are important information that help with decision making. By describing four years of experience in one word does not explain what you can do and limits your opportunities for interview. Remember, interviews are the doors or gates to your first or next job. If you only take time to write the document, you will stop making unnecessary mistakes that can easily be avoided. There is no need of listing all the subjects that you studied in college. At the end of an academic training, one gets a certificate, and it is the same after attaining a professional qualification. Therefore, including a list of all the subjects you learned does not add value to your CV. It can make it lengthy, if that is your objective. However, the qualification attained is what should be written. For example, Diploma in Business Management or Bachelor's of Arts in business management. A professional qualification for an accountant can be a certified public accountant or certified human resource practitioner for a HR consultant. Fresh graduates and those with limited experience can populate the CVs with other relevant information other than the subject studied, such as voluntary work or internships. Do you think subjects studied should be listed in your CV? Please leave us a comment below. Misrepresentation is another common blunder that we make. Listing the skills that you have is not wrong. However, you can misrepresent yourself. For example, if your document indicates that you are detail-oriented with excellent writing and communication skills, how the document is written should be the first measure that you have these skills. Submitting a document with grammatical errors, spelling mistakes, formatting errors, clearly misrepresent what you have indicated as your skills. You probably did not read it through or gave it to someone else to write it and forward. Please comment below what you think a recruiter should do with such a CV, especially if the position requires report writing and regular communication with stakeholders. And that is why you ought to be very keen when writing this document as it speaks to the reader before they get to meet you in person. Referees play an important role on your CV. Missing out on important details such as the email address or the phone contact of a referee makes your CV incomplete. You would rather indicate references will be availed on request as opposed to indicating a name and not giving details of how they can be contacted. Writing only one name of your referee is not correct. They may be familiar to you but not the recruiter. It is unprofessional to address a stranger in a familiar manner when conducting a background check. Does your referee remember you? This is another mistake we make by listing people who do not know as well. Take time to understand who is a referee and select someone who knows you well. Do not list people you met once and because of their positions, you want to have them on your CV. Referees help us make important decisions. Choose them wisely. How have you selected your referees in the past? Please leave us a comment. Not updating your CV as your career progresses is another blunder that we make. Using a standard CV to apply for jobs can waste a lot of time and you can miss out on plenty of opportunities. You should customize your CV for every application submitted. Highlight the skills required for each position if you qualify. This increases your chances of being invited to interview. For example, if you're a qualified accountant as well as a recruiter, you can apply for a position that requires either of the two skills. If you submit an application for an accountant with recruiting skills but attach a CV that has not been updated with the recruiting skills, you will not be invited to interview. Those who include both skills and qualify will be invited. Therefore, 
Updating your CV is key and not doing this limits your interview chances. Stop making mistakes that can easily be avoided. Lifting previous job descriptions and pasting them on your CV as they were is a bad mistake. Those who do this do not make any changes in regard to grammar and someone reading the CV may think you still work with your previous employer because the information is still current. Remember, recruiters spend very limited time on any CV. Why don't you capture the key roles in your previous employment and summarize appropriately as you move on? We have seen why you need to customize your CV for each job application and the blunders we make when writing them. And therefore, if you want to learn how to write a professional CV and increase your chances of getting interview opportunities, enroll for our virtual and in-person classes on career guidance by visiting our website at 5 To engage us further on this and future topics, please subscribe below and we shall reply to your comment. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. Goodbye until next time. If you have learned something today, please like and share to benefit others. You can also subscribe to get our next tutorial.